Welcome to the pre-class PowerPoint on the concept of immunity. Within this PowerPoint, we're going to present a general overview of immunity and do a basic description of the exemplars that we're going to be covering, as well as some general care and nursing considerations. The concept immunity defined as per the text is a natural or induced physiologic response to infection and its associated conditions. Another way to think of it is, is your body's natural response against things that are foreign, foreign invaders or things that are not supposed to be there. So it's the body's attempt to protect itself from foreign invaders. The term immunocompetent is a term describing somebody who has a normally functioning immune system as opposed to somebody who is immunodeficient. Uh, generally, when you look at immune disorders, you're looking at either a hyperimmune system like allergies or autoimmunity or a hypo response over immunodeficient immune response. So those are the two ends of the spectrum that you look at when you look at problems with immunity in and of itself. The exemplars we're going to look at in class are HIV AIDS, rheumatoid arthritis, systemic lupus erythematosus, also known as lupus, or SLE, and multiple sclerosis. For your review and for your pre-assignment, my expectation is that you're going to do a review of the components of the immune system, and your pre-assignment actually does that in terms of reviewing the cells, the different types of cells, and how they all work together. Other things to consider are the types of immune responses. The body has multiple immune responses. Some are targeted, some are nonspecific. So the body has multiple levels of immunity and multiple types of responses to the threat of infection or threat of foreign invasion. The immune system develops over time, and certainly when babies are born, they're carrying the antibodies of their mother, and that's what we call passive immunity. As a child matures, the expectation is that child's immune system will start to develop and mature. On the other end of the age spectrum, when you age or are under a lot of stress, you're going to see a decrease in your ability to respond to infection or foreign invaders. So the concepts, and there's many, but just to relate, obviously infection and inflammation, because inflammation is part of your immune response. So infection, inflammation, tissue integrity, mobility, comfort, stress, grief, and loss. And that's just to name a few. There's, you could probably connect most concepts back to immunity in one way, shape, or form. At least in my world, you can. When you're looking at immunodeficiency, you're looking at someone who has an inability or a deficient ability to fight off infection and foreign invaders. Some people have what's called primary immune deficiency, where they just don't have an immune system. Okay. HIV AIDS is an immune deficiency. Certainly, people have immunodeficiency as a side effect of leukemia and cancer treatment. Um, they can have it as a side effect from medications, for example, corticosteroids and met methotrexate or ordering organ transplant. Patients that are organ transplant recipients purposely become immunosuppressed or immunodeficient in order to reduce the possibility of rejecting that organ. On the other end, hyper-responsiveness of the immune system is when the immune system gets a little out of control. So a hypersensitivity response, in other words, allergies are considered hyper-responsiveness. Certainly anaphylaxis is considered hyper-responsiveness. And then autoimmunity. Autoimmunity is when the body turns upon itself and loses the ability to recognize self from non-self in one certain portion of the body. So there's a lot of different autoimmune disorders. Oftentimes, people that have one autoimmune disorder are going to be at much higher risk to develop other autoimmune disorders. So for example, people who, are, um, who have systemic lupus erythematosus or lupus may be more likely to develop um, Raynaud's phenomenon, which has an autoimmune component. So just to kind of give you an idea, and there's a list of some of the autoimmune disorders that are out there. Um, this is certainly not an exhaustive list. I know I have a friend who has antiphospholipid syndrome, which is not on this list, but it involves her having multiple strokes. Third thing for hyper-responsiveness of the immune system is when you receive an organ transplant and the body tries to 
do what it's supposed to and reject the organ. But it, in this case, it's a hyper-responsiveness that you don't want. So transplant rejection is considered hyper-responsiveness of the immune system. As immunity relates to genomics, certainly you can bring a lot of things in here. You could inherit a familial predisposition to developing allergies. Some immune diseases have a higher prevalence in one gender or another or one ethnicity or another. Um, people that have history of autoimmune disorders in their family may be at more risk to develop autoimmunity. That happens also with gender. There are some autoimmune disorders that are more likely to occur in men or women. So genomics and immunity are pretty strongly tied together. Oftentimes with autoimmune disorders, you don't know exactly what caused it. It's usually a constellation of problems, but they can't rule out a genetic predisposition to developing an autoimmune disorder. General risk factors for an immune disorder, age, we have the non-modifiables and they're the same ones, age, history, gender, race, and ethnicity. And then the modifiable ones are the same ones that we've looked at. Certainly substance use as it relates to HIV AIDS greatly increases the risk factor for developing this disorder. And I don't know if you've been following the news, but in Indiana recently they've had outbreaks of HIV in a small area related to the IV heroin abuse that's going on within those communities. When it looks at taking good care of your immune system, some of it's controlling the modifiable risk factors. It's making sure that you're eating things that are going to support immunity. It's taking care of yourself, making sure that you're not too tired because stress is going to decrease your immune response. Hey, and it's also prevention of infectious diseases through things like immunization and also through things like hand washing, which people tend to overlook, but it's the single best thing you can do to prevent the spread of infectious diseases. So let's talk briefly about immunization. And this has been a hot topic lately because of, um, I'm not really even sure, but the news keeps bringing immunization back. And there's people out there that are not vaccinating their children. It's a personal choice. Um, one thing to consider is what type of immunity is this called? You know, because the vaccine is given to stimulate an immune response. So it's a certain type of immunity. Generally, a vaccine are classified as live or attenuated, which is a dead virus or virus parts. Responses to vaccines, most people don't have a response. Sometimes they'll have a localized response. Um, the MMR, which is a live shot, you may actually have some sort of immune response to it and develop a low-grade temp. I know that some of you think you're going to get the flu from the flu shot. It cannot happen. Okay, it just can't. Uh, so when to immunize, there are certain contraindications to immunization. Um, certainly, um, immunodeficiency isn't as much of a contraindication as you say, but you don't want to give someone who's immunodeficient an MMR, which is a live virus. Um, and there's the great vaccine debate, which I'm not willing to get into. Um, you know, all I know is that there's a spread of childhood diseases that they thought were eradicated because of the idea of herd immunity, and if most of the herd or most of the people are vaccinated against the disorder, then those who are immunocompromised are not going to have that disorder. Your nursing assessment as it relates to immunity, what is the patient's biographical history? Can they tell you about what their life has been like? Known risk factors and other subjective data. Okay? You can look at a patient and kind of know whether or not they're in good health or good condition. Their vital signs, certainly their skin and mucous membranes. Someone who has papery thin skin is not going to be a good risk for um, maintaining a good immunity. Assessment of lymph nodes by palpation, and then other targeted assessments as it relates to the organ or disorder involved. Part of the immune response is the inflammation response. So a CBC is going to be a good idea. We're going to talk about the role of ELISA, Western blot, CD4, and viral load as it relates to HIV, and some of the other testing that's going to happen as it relates to autoimmune disorders. When you're looking at treatments for immunity, immune disorders, some of it's in protection from infection. If it's immunodeficiency, you may be looking to boost the immune system through medications like filgrastim. 
or in the case of HIV, to combat the HIV virus, which is causing the destruction of your immune response. Non-pharmacologic things like maintaining a good diet and getting a good night's sleep are key with respect to maintaining immunity. Alternative therapies out there, things like Tai Chi, yoga, Reiki therapy, which are targeting some of the stress factor and decreasing serum cortisol levels. So how to attack immunity, okay? We're gonna look at immunodeficiency first and then we're gonna switch gears over to hyper-responsiveness. Our exemplar is HIV AIDS. You probably know a lot about it. I grew up in the 80s, so I kind of grew up when it was being discovered. So think about, as we move into Monday, and I'm not gonna give you the answers, what's the cause of the immunodeficiency? What implications does it have for the patient? And how does one treat this type of immunodeficiency? So think about that. Autoimmunity, it's a counterattack. In other words, it's a body, it's turning on itself. So a autoimmunity is the body turning on itself or recognizing or failing to recognize self from non-self. No matter what the disease process, how are you going to treat somebody with a hyper-responsive immune system or disorder? You better say suppress the immune system. So then you have to think through what the implications mean for the patient. And we've been here before, so this is not, should not be surprising information. Okay. Exemplar number one is HIV. Okay, and I'm going to just let you look at that because the things we're going to think about are risk factors. What happens if a person gets stuck, for example, a healthcare provider gets stuck and now what, you know, what do they have to do? the prognosis now for HIV patients, and we're also going to look at things like pre- and post-exposure prophylaxis, which is a new thing on the, on the block and has been life-changing for many people with HIV. Rheumatoid arthritis, I want you to ask, what attacks what? Okay. Are there risk factors? And we're going to talk about the manifestations and treatment of RA. Okay. Lupus. Hey, it's a it's a disorder that's hard to characterize, but we're going to try and characterize it. Once again, it's an autoimmune disorder. I want you to think about what's tacking what. And with lupus, I like to say you have a bad case of the itises. So think of a disorder that ends in itis, and you may have that related to lupus because it causes a lot of inflammation. Long-term effects, think about the different organs and how long how that inflammation might affect them. And once again, go back to how do you treat autoimmunity. And the third autoimmune disorder we look at is multiple sclerosis. And in the last, you know, throughout the years, there have been multiple media figures that have been diagnosed with MS. So it's been in the news off and on over the past several years. Um, and like I said, we'll look at that in a little bit more detail in class when we get to it. So that concludes our brief overview of immunity. What I want you to do is review this PowerPoint, which you should have done. And then go to the pre-class assignment, which is your immune physiology, where you start to look at immune components so that we can move from there into HIV. Thank you very much for attention, and I will see you in class.